Hare Krishna. Welcome everyone to our Tuesday evening Bhagavad Gita discussion. So thank you all for joining. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmay Shri Gurave Namaha Mukam Karoti Vachalam Pangum Langhaya Tehigirin Yat Kripata Maham Vande Shri Guru Dinatarine Paramananda Madhavam Shri Chaitanya Shwaram Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nitinamine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Niravishesha Shunyavadi Paschat Deshatarine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaitya Gadadha Shivas Adi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, once again, welcome everyone. So, last time we were talking chapter 7 of Bhagavad Gita, we discussed text number 7 to 15. So, in the last session, we talked about Krishna says, I am the source of everything and I can be perceived by various things like the taste of the water, the fragrance of the earth. I am the prowess of the powerful, the intelligence of the intelligent. So I can be perceived everywhere. The Supreme Lord can be perceived in so many different ways. Then why people are not able to approach Krishna? Why people are not able to appreciate Krishna? Because everybody is covered up by the three modes of material nature. And this material nature is also Krishna's energy. Mama Maya Dhuraktaya. So Lord Krishna says, my illusory energy is very difficult to overcome. And how to overcome that? When somebody surrenders unto me, then one can very easily cross beyond my illusory energy. Mama Eviye Prapadyante Tam Stathev. Um, so, Mama Eviye Prapadyante. So, Krishna says, somebody who surrenders unto me, they can very easily cross beyond it. And then, text 15, Lord Krishna talks about four type of people who never approach Krishna, who never surrender unto Krishna. And these four type of people, who are these? Namam Dushkriti no Muda Prapadyante Naradhamaha Maya Aparitta Gyana Asuram Bhava Mashritaha. So those miscreants who are grossly foolish, who are lowest among the mankind, Naradhamaha, Maya Aparitta Gyana, whose intelligence, whose knowledge is stolen by illusion, and Asuram Bhava Mashrita, who are partaking into the atheistic nature of demons. So, these four type of people never surrender unto Krishna. So, we discussed up to this text. Now, in the next text, Lord Krishna further speaks about four type of people who approach Krishna, who starts to approach the Supreme Lord. And what are these four type of people? So, text 16. Chaturvida bhajante maam Jana Sukritino Arjuna Arto Jigyasur Arth Arthi Gyani Chabharata Rashabha. Oh, best among the Bharatas. Four kind of pious men begin to render devotional service sent to me. So Chaturvida Bhajante Maam. So Krishna says these four type of people, four type of pious men, Sukritino. So these four type of pious men, they begin to render devotional service unto me. And these are Arto. Arth means distress. So somebody who is distressed, 
who is in need of something or who is in need of relieving some misery arto jigyasur who is inquisitive okay maybe there is some god i will like to understand who is god who is the creator of everything so like that kind of inquisitiveness and then arth arthi somebody who is in want of something in need of some gain either wealth or some opulences something who is in need of something and then fourth is gyani somebody who is in knowledge so these four type of people they start to render devotional service unto krishna they start to move towards krishna so <clears throat> these four type of people we said distressed distressed means somebody may have some bodily problem some sickness some disease and they pray to krishna oh please help me recover from this disease or something so somebody may be having bodily problem somebody may have some financial problem some lot of debt somebody may be into some legal problems so when somebody is in some distress situation in that they start to pray to the lord please help me to come out of this problem then inquisitiveness out of curiosity okay and seeker of wealth arth arathi so people approach god for dhanam dehi sundri dehi putra dehi so all these different things please give me money please give me good body phys good physique please give me a nice wife or a husband or please give me nice children so all these kind of things and then the fourth one is who is seeker of knowledge so they are not pure devotees but they at least acknowledge the presence of the supreme and they approach him and what is the situation of krishna here krishna's position is he is so hungry for devotion that even if their devotion is mixed not pure he is very happy to accept them and gradually lead them to the pure devotion state that at least okay at least they are coming to me for something and krishna says let them come and i will slowly purify them and i will gradually lead them to the pure devotion so there are examples for all these four type of people which krishna is describing here those who surrender to krishna so we can relate to particular devotee who approach the supreme lord under these four different condition arth when in distress the example is gajendra right in gajendra mokshila we hear about this elephant gajendra who is being captured by the crocodile graha and in that state then he calls out to the supreme lord and he was actually fortunate enough to remember his past life memory being a devotee of the lord and then he called out to the lord in this distressed situation so that was the example of devotee who called out to the lord rendered some service in a distressed situation arth and then jigyasur jigyasur means just being inquisitive that example is the shonakadi rishi so in bhagavatam we see all these sages led by shonaka they were performing a thousand year long yagya they were doing performing a yagya swaha swaha and based on the the whole smoke rising from the yagya their whole faces are covered by the smoke and all and then they saw sutta goswami sitting at a distance very peaceful and they approached him and inquired from him so there was some inquisitiveness maybe something higher is there we want to know so that is jigyasur and then arth arthi example is dhruva maharaj dhruva maharaj why he approached the supreme lord because of a desire i want to gain a kingdom bigger than my father's kingdom bigger than my father's father's kingdom so that was the desire to begin with and of course we know when dhruva maharaj as instructed by narada muni he performed austerities and while performing these austerities he was purified and when lord appeared in front of him and touched the conchal on his cheek all the materialistic desires were gone he was completely purified and when lord asked then ask me what is your desire he said i don't want anything i was looking for the shattered pieces of glasses but i got a 
pure diamond. I don't want anything now. So, Arth Arthi. Starting the devotion service with the desire to gain something. But as Krishna says, at least somebody comes to me, I will accept them and I will gradually elevate them to the higher standards. So, Arth Arthi, who is seeker of something, or who is in need of something, and then Jnani, who are in knowledge, and that example is given is Chatush Kumara, the Sanak Sanatan Sanandan. So these are the four type of devotees who start approaching Krishna. In the beginning, they are not pure, but as they start associating with the devotees, they become pure. And first three categories, they are like Sakama Bhakti. And many people are in the mixed state, basically. When we all come and came in the process of devotion service, it's all based on maybe one of these categories. Right? We all can relate to that, how we started our devotional journey. Maybe okay, let me try out, let me seek something. Maybe out, either out of inquisitiveness or some distress or some want of something. And then as we continue to associate with the devotees, Krishna slowly purify. And the condition here is, yes, one has to associate with the devotees. And start to render some service in the association of devotees by accepting some authority in the process. And then slowly and gradually Krishna will purify. And text 17, now Krishna further talk about this Jnani Bhakti, one who is in knowledge. Krishna says, even though these are the four type of devotee who start approaching me, out of them, Somebody who is in knowledge, he is best among all those. So, text seven, uh, 17, Krishna says, of these one who is in full knowledge and who is always engaged in pure devotional service is the best. For I am very dear to him and he is dear to me. So, here... When Krishna is again talking about Jnani Bhakta in text 17, here Jnani in Krishna's words means who is at the level of Prema Bhakti. So somebody who is a Premi Bhakta, that is in pure knowledge. And Krishna is giving two criteria here. Okay, The first Jnani mentioned in text 17 is somebody who is in some basic understanding, who is in some knowledge. Yes, God is there and he is all powerful. He is all kind, all merciful. That is the starting level. But in text 17, the Jnani which Krishna is referring to is somebody who is a Premi Bhakta. And Krishna is giving two criteria here. So one who is in full knowledge plus who is fully engaged in devotional service. So when these two things combine together, that is called Premi Bhakta. Okay? Not just a Jnani, but Jnani and engaged fully in devotional service. So Krishna is not saying somebody who is just in knowledge. That is best. No. Somebody who is in knowledge, full knowledge, plus engaged in devotional service. So please understand the difference very clearly. Krishna is not talking about somebody just Jnani. So, having just knowledge is not enough. One need to act on that knowledge. And the fact is, the knowledge naturally leads to love and devotion. Okay, for example, uh, in Ramayan, it says, Jane bina na hoye pratiti. And bina pratiti hoye nahi priti. So what is the meaning? Jane bina na hoye pratiti. Without knowing, there cannot be faith. Pratiti. And without faith, love cannot grow. Bina pratiti hoye nahi priti. So if we want to love somebody, we have to know about that person. Then only we can love that person. Thus, true knowledge is naturally accompanied with love. If we claim we possess knowledge of Brahman, but we feel no love towards him, then our knowledge is merely theoretical. Right? If we claim we know Krishna, 
but then we have no feeling, no love towards Krishna, then our knowledge is theoretical. For example, somebody knows that mango tree is very valuable. So there is a mango tree in the yard and this mango tree is very valuable. It gives nice, tasty mangoes. But then one does not do anything to care for that tree, does not water the tree, does not protect the tree and eventually cuts it down. So what kind of knowledge is that? One, one does not even care for that. So Krishna gives the highest ideology, but at the same time, Krishna gives most accommodating principles also. So in text 17, Krishna says, Jnani Bhakta, so the devotee who is situated in knowledge is the highest. And now Sri Krishna clarifies that other three kinds of devotees are also very blessed devotees. They are also very blessed souls. And Krishna is referring them as Udar, okay, very magnanimous. So whoever engages in devotion for whatever reason is privileged. They are very magnanimous souls. So generally we call Lord as magnanimous, right? Krishna is magnanimous. But here Krishna is calling anybody who approach him as magnanimous. Anyone who comes to the Lord for any purpose is called a Mahatma, a great soul. And the devotee who wants some benefit out of devotional service are accepted by the Lord because there is an exchange of affection. Kuch to prem hai, kuch to sneha hai. And out of affection, they ask the Lord for some material benefit. Okay, like a child may ask his father for some material benefit. So Krishna accepts that also, that at least they are having an exchange of affection. And when they get it and they become so satisfied that they also advance in devotional service. But the devotion in full knowledge is very dear to Krishna because his only purpose, that devotee's only purpose is to serve the Supreme Lord with love and devotion without his own selfish agenda. Okay. So, generally in this material world, what kind of love we see is all selfish. There is the selfish love affair in this material world. What is shown in the movies is if we are united, we if we are not get to kind of meet each other, we will run away. And if there is resistance from families, we will commit suicide. If not in this life, then we will become one in next life. So yes, maybe as ghost. <laughs> so, but that is the kind of ideology, the principle is there in this material world. But on the other side, love towards Krishna is also kind of a love affair for which one should be ready to do anything. In case of Rukmini, she just heard about Krishna. He, she heard about the qualities of Krishna from the Brahmanas and she developed love for Krishna. She has never seen Krishna. She has never met Krishna. It's not that Krishna and Rukmini used to go to college together, sitting in the canteen, drinking the tea and eating samosas and falling in love with each other. She just heard about Krishna and hearing the qualities of Krishna, she developed so much attraction. And as her wedding is arranged against her will with Shishupal, she sent a letter to Krishna through a Brahmana. And Krishna came to take her. Rukmi, Rukmani's brother, Rukmi attacked Krishna. Krishna could have slaughtered him without any difficulty. But Rukmini protested and begged to spare the life of her brother. So, love for Krishna does not make us self-centered, but worldly love makes us self-centered. So, here in this verse, Krishna is saying that, let me read text 18. So Krishna says, Udarha sarva evete jnani tvat meva me matam. Asthitam sahi yuktatma mame vanuttama gatim. So all these devotees are undoubtedly magnanimous souls. But he who is situated in knowledge of me, I consider be just like my own self. 
being engaged in my transcendental service, he is sure to attain me the highest and most perfect goal. So what I was describing here is we need to develop that love for Krishna. So earlier we may approach Krishna in a stage of bhogi. Right? We want to gain something for ourselves with a selfish agenda we may approach Krishna. But then from bhogi to tyagi if we, we need to come to that stage of renunciation to bhakta developing that love for the supreme lord so that's why in bhagavatam also it describes vasudeva parah veda vasudeva parah makha vasudeva parah yoga vasudeva parah kriya vasudeva param gyanam vasudeva param tapah vasudeva paro dharmo vasudeva parah gati that Vasudeva is everything. Supreme Lord Krishna, He is everything. He is the essence of all the Vedas. He is the, the benefactor of the Yajyas. He is the supreme the so, uh, destination of Yoga. He is the end result of all the activities, of all the knowledge, of all the austerities. And Vasudeva Paragatihi. He is the supreme destination. So there may be many dharma in our life. We are serving our parents, serving the nation, serving the family, serving the company, serving the society. So there may be many dharma. But ultimate goal is Vasudeva. Vasudeva Parahagati. And text 19, then Krishna describes who is really a Mahatma. Bahunam Janmana Mante Gyana Van Mama Prapadyate Vasudeva Sarvamiti Sa Mahatma Sudur Labha. After many, many births, he who is actually in knowledge surrenders unto me, knowing me to be the same, uh, knowing me to be the cause of all causes, and all that is such a great soul is very rare. So somebody after going through many, many lives. Somebody may have been practicing some de devotion, maybe worshipping some other Devi Devatas. And ultimately, after many, many lifetimes, then one come to this understanding that Vasudeva, Krishna, he is the cause of all causes. And when one surrenders unto him, that soul is very rare. And that is considered as a Mahatma. So the definition of Mahatma given by Krishna here is very wonderful definition. Who is a Mahatma? Okay. So not anybody doing some pious activity, some material welfare activity, but one who can deliver from all temporary problems and give permanent cure. So text 19, four kind of people Krishna described, they start approaching me. So Krishna had started in text 16 as bhajante. Right? They start doing bhajan. They start doing some devotional service. And after many, many lifetime, they reach to prapadyante, surrender. So there is a slow progression. So if you carefully see the words used here in text 16, Krishna had used the word bhajante. Chaturvida bhajante maam. And then in text 19, Krishna says, Gyanavan mam prapadyante. One surrenders unto me. Take complete shelter of me. So that soul is very rare. So these people, these four category of people, they have some spiritual pious credit. They have done some bhakti in some way. Somebody may have done some agyat sukriti. Right? Without knowing, they have done some pious activity, some sukriti. For example, Watering Tulsi while watering the garden. Maybe they are watering their garden and it happens to be a Tulsi plant also there and they water Tulsi unknowingly. So they got a Gyat Sukriti. Some giving somebody some prasad or eating prasad from devotee or somebody is walking on the street and there is a 
group of devotees passing by, they are chanting Kirtan and they happen to hear that Maha Mantra. Or somebody just gave some donation to the devotee. Somebody just praised the devotee. That is all leading to Agyat Sukriti. So when somebody has that some Agyat Sukriti, some spiritual pious credit, not simply pious credit, it's called Agyat Sukriti is called spiritual pious credit. There's some Agyat Bhakti they have done. So after many lifetimes, when one come in knowledge, understand that Vasudev is everything, that person is very rare. So Durlabha, Durlabha is rare or very rare. And Su Durlabha, Krishna is using the word here, Su Durlabha means extremely rare. And they become completely fixed in service. Prapadyante. Vasudev is everything, does not mean serve everything. Okay, That's why people mistakenly take to this concept that oh, Vasudev is everything and we can do any philanthropic work or people come up with this idea of serving service to uh, man in service to God. So something like those kind of ideas like pantheism philosophy. So Vasudev is manifested in everything but Vasudev has his personal form also. Okay, For example, when Hiranyakashipu asked Prahlad okay, tell me where is your Vishnu? Is your Vishnu in this pillar also? So Prahlad was looking at the pillar but Prahlad when he folded his hands paid obeisances Prahlad did not pay obeisances to the pillar and did not offer garland to the pillar. He offered to Lord Narsingh Dev. He was seeing Lord Narsingh Dev there. He was paying obeisances to Narsingh Dev and he offered garland to Lord Narsingh Dev. So Jnanavan means one understand that Vasudev is everything but Jnanavan renders service to the personal form of Vasudev. In not just going with the idea of impersonalism. Yes, oh, Vasudev is everywhere. Vasudev is everything. So everything is equal and same. He accepts that yes, Vasudev is there in everything and everyone, but Vasudev has his personal form also. So then text 20 onwards, now Krishna starts describing the concept of various Devi Devatas. Okay, so what about those people who do not reject Krishna, but they approach other Devi Devatas. They may accept Krishna also, but they worship any other particular Devi Devata. So text 20, now Lord Krishna says, why do some people surrender not to him, but to other Devatas? Due to material desires. Okay, so here Krishna explained why people go to some other Devi Devatas. What are the reasons? And what kind of benefit they can get. So all that is explained now in text 20 through 23. So Krishna says, Kama is ter hrita jnana prapadyante anya devataha tam tam nityam asthaya prakritya niyataha savayaha So here Krishna is telling those whose intelligence has been stolen by material desires. So because of material desires, their knowledge has been, intelligence has been stolen. So they surrender unto various other Devi Devatas and follow the particular rules and regulation of worship according to one's nature. So question may come. Okay. First of all, why did Krishna create these Devi Devatas? So if Krishna did not create these Devi Devatas in first place, there will be no confusion. So why did Krishna make these Devi Devatas and complicate it? And not only one or two or three. There are Tethis Koti Devi Devata. Right? So for example, if you go to a store and there are two, three different brands, you want to buy a pant or shirt, there are two, three different brands, it becomes difficult to choose. And here there are Tethis Koti. 
so how somebody can understand whom should i approach and it becomes so complicated so confusing so why first of all krishna create these devi devtas many people ask this question so yes krishna has created everything and krishna does not entangle with any of this material creation then who is handling this krishna says maya adhyakshitah maya adhyakshena prakriti suhyate sacharacharam so maya adhyakshena prakriti krishna says this material nature under my supervision is working everything so the subordinates of krishna they handle that work krishna himself does not entangle into the material affairs just like the ceo of the company ceo of the company does not have to do everything by himself he has appointed many different employees supervisors who will take care of the company so same way krishna has created this whole material creation but krishna himself does not entangle with them and krishna just desires and work is done so first of all material nature is there and there are so many representatives of krishna and who are these devi devatas because krishna says anyways i have to run the affairs of this universal government and there are so many devotees who have desire to do particular task so let me give them opportunity to handle this particular department this particular task so all these devi devatas they are the representatives of krishna who are the administrator of this universal government they are also devotees of the lord and but they are appointed in different capacity in different services so krishna has created this whole system to run the affair of this universal creation so the vedic system is created in such a way that various people based on their level they can worship different devi devatas and make progress slowly that's why the sanatan dharma the whole vedic system is all inclusiveness it's not that you worship me otherwise you are going to doom to hell forever there is no concept like that it says okay even if you want to worship that particular devi devata that's fine so krishna says at least somebody approaches them at least they accept some higher authority at least they are accepting that yes there is something superior to me and let me take shelter of that so there are 18 puranas out of those 18 puranas six puranas are which deal with the mode of goodness and they point towards the worship of lord vishnu there are six puranas who deal with the mode of passion and they points towards the worship of brahma and there are six puranas who deal with the mode of ignorance and they point towards the worship of lord shiva so again be very careful don't distort the words here i am saying the puranas deal with the mode of ignorance or mode of passion or mode of goodness and they point to the worship of particular devata i am not saying that particular purana is in that particular mode or that particular personality that particular devata is in that particular mode okay so now if somebody is in tamoguna in mode of ignorance here the vedic system is even the person who is in the mode of ignorance it does not mean they cannot practice spirituality they can also practice spirituality they can also progress slowly so that's why there is a system of devi devata's worship is given but if one if the somebody at least start at some point some level and then slowly that bhakti matures the force of bhakti comes and it can make one progress suddenly also so why this system of devi devatas is created to run the universal affair because krishna himself does not entangle him uh, with that second is there are so many devotees who has the desire to serve in krishna in some capacity and krishna says yes i need to run this affair so let me appoint them in various capacities so that's why krishna has created all these designations of different devi devatas and then the third is there is a system of uh, what do you call as concession right or recommend there is a concession process 
what is that concession is if you want to do something some concession is given okay let's say somebody is a chain smoker somebody smokes 50 cigarettes a day and he is not able to quit completely. He is suffering from some disease, but he is so addicted, he cannot quit smoking altogether. He goes to the doctor and doctor says, okay, reduce. You cannot quit altogether. It's fine. No, from 50, you're smoking 50 cigarettes, come down to 30. So reduce. So that is called concession. So some concession is given. It does not mean that it has become the standard that, okay, now you can smoke 30 cigarettes a day. That is the standard. Or you can smoke, continue to smoke 10 cigarettes a day. So that is a concession. In the beginning, some concession is given. So same way when somebody in, influenced by various modes, let's say mode of ignorance or mode of passion, there is a particular system of worship given in the Shastras that at least you follow this particular practice. So it does not mean that has become as a standard, but we should understand that is a concession given. At least you do bare minimum this much. At least you come to this standard. And then there is also something called recommendation. Recommendation means, oh, it will be good if you do this. Okay, So the concession is the Devi Devata worship is given like as a concession. But worshipping the Supreme Lord is like a recommendation. Oh, this is best if you do it this way. For example, when somebody is sick, then there is a recommendation that, okay, you eat this healthy diet. Somebody has diabetic or oh, don't eat sugar, something like that. So there is a recommended process or sometimes there is a concession. If somebody is not able to follow the highest standard, then some concession is given. At least do this much. So... In Bhagavatam, it says even if somebody is filled with desires or somebody is desirous of liberation, still one should approach the Supreme Lord. Akama Sarva Kamova Moksha Kama Udaradi. So even if somebody is desirous of material gain or somebody has no desire, somebody is desiring liberation, in all situations, one should approach the Supreme Lord. So in Text 21 to 23, these three verses are very wonderful verses. Here, Krishna describes that even though somebody has material desires and they want to fulfill those desires quickly and they approach a particular Devi Devata, I am the one who give them faith in that particular Devi Devata, in that particular deity. So that is text 21. So Krishna says, even the faith to worship a particular Devi Devata is also given by me. I make their faith strong that, okay, at least you want to approach this personality for this desire. So that faith also I provide. And then text 22, Krishna says, I am the one who make that Devi Devata capable to award the result. So those Devi Devatas have no independence, whatever benefits they are giving to the seeker, I am giving that capability to the Devi Devatas. And then text 23, Krishna says, even though they are awarding some results, but one should know that the results awarded by all these Devi Devatas, they are temporary. Yes, they are giving some benedictions, but those benedictions are not permanent. Those are temporary. So these are the three verses which are very uh, relevant and kind of a nice flow to understand the concept of these Devi Devatas and what is the outcome of worshipping the Devi Devatas. So text 21, Krishna says, whatever form one is attracted to, okay, whatever form one wants to worship, let's say somebody is attracted towards worshipping Ganeshji or somebody is attracted towards worshipping Durga, Krishna says, I make their faith fixed in that deity. Because to worship, one has to have some faith. And Krishna says, I make their faith achala, unshakable. So Krishna is so kind, he does not reject the Devi Devata worship or reject those people who want to go to Devi Devatas. So he is not concerned about his own glory. But Krishna is concerned about our elevation. Krishna is not saying, no, 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 you have to come to me only. Krishna does not force. 
when one goes to Krishna by their own desire, Krishna is very happy to welcome, receive everybody. Even somebody comes by desire also. But Krishna is not forcing. And Krishna does not reject anybody if they want to approach a particular Devi Devata. Okay, one very wonderful reflection I had about this point was uh, in devotee communities also we see sometimes some devotee may be connected at one place and then they give up that association and go to another one. There is no question of grudge. One should not be holding any grudge. Oh, he was connected with me and he left me and went somewhere else. Because ultimately all these relationships are temporary and Krishna himself is saying that, okay, even if somebody is going to other particular Devi Devata, I don't hold any grudge towards them. Actually, I make their faith strong. So we should also actually imbibe this very wonderful, beautiful principle that we should not be holding any grudge towards somebody, but rather pray that make wherever they are going, may they continue to make their progress. And ultimately, they come under the fold of Krishna. So Krishna is so magnanimous in this case. So Krishna is not like a envious boss who thinks, oh, if some employees or my juniors are not glorifying me or not uh, working as per my instruction, then I will cast them away or I will reject them. Just imagine in office, if boss is there and he wants everyone to know I am the boss, okay, he may have one employee kind of glorify him. And one, one, may, one employee may start glorifying him that he is like the CEO of the company. But imagine if the actual CEO comes there, the CEO will hear, hey, how come this manager is uh, being addressed as the CEO? So this CEO, the real CEO, he will get very mad. How come you are calling him as CEO? He will get mad with the person who is accepting this glorification and also at the person who is doing this kind of glorification. But Krishna is not like that. He is not concerned that whatever people recognize me or not. So Krishna is not concerned whether people recognize me or not, whether people worship me or not. But he gives faith in that particular Devata. And Krishna facilitates the elevation. So that shows Krishna's kind of broad-mindedness. So again, one may ask, why does Krishna create faith in other Devi Devatas when such faith is improperly placed, right? Inappropriately placed. So why does Krishna let them fall into the trap of illusory energy? So the answer is, that Supreme Lord as Super Soul, He does not give such facility. Then if Krishna does not give such facility, then there is no meaning of independence. Because every living entity is avoided with some free will. And Krishna is giving the free will to approach any superior personality. Even though not directly Krishna, but at least somebody is approaching some other intermediate superior personality, somebody accepting some other authority. So that is one. An example to understand is just like parents, parents allow their children to show affection on the dolls as if they were real babies, right? Sometimes the kids play with some dolls, like feeding the doll, taking care of the doll as if that is their baby, something like that. So parents know that child's affection for doll is out of ignorance. But still, they let them play with the dolls. They encourage the child to love and play with the doll. The reason is, parents know this will help develop the qualities of affection and love and care, which will be beneficial when the child grows up. So similarly, when the living entity worships the Devi Devatas, for material gains also, Krishna studies their faith. Krishna says, I am giving them faith. With the hope that this experience will help them at least develop these qualities of love, faith, devotion 
and slowly they will move upward. Okay, even somebody who does not worshiping any particular Devi Devata, as if somebody is completely atheist, he does not even accept any superior authority. Where is the question of having that love faith? So at least somebody is showing that love and affection and devotion towards somebody, some superior authority, they will at least develop those qualities. So that is the reason Krishna is giving faith, making their faith steady, even in the Devi Devatas. And then text 22, Krishna here explains how the Devi Devatas are also empowered by Krishna to fulfill their desires. So Krishna is the one who is actually giving the result. For example, if somebody asks the king for some wealth and king tells his cashier, right, his khajanchi, to provide that much amount to this person. But if but the person who received that from the treasurer and he starts thinking, oh, this treasurer is giving me, this treasurer is so wonderful, he's so magnanimous. He is not understanding that actually treasurer is giving only as instructed by the king only. The treasurer by himself has no authority, but has no power to give. He is giving only sanctioned by the king. So same way the Devi Devatas, they are giving, but only what is sanctioned by the Supreme Lord, what is uh, avoided by the Supreme Lord. Another example to understand is in a company, I may approach my boss and ask for some uh, facility as like my cell phone is broken. I want to get a new cell phone or my laptop is broken. I want to get a new laptop. So I put a request and manager approves. So, but is it really that manager is giving me the cell phone or the laptop? Ultimately, from where is it coming? Who is sanctioning? This is ultimately coming from the higher authority, which is the owner of that company who is awarding these benefits. The same way these Devi Devatas, they are the intermediate agents who are supplying these benefits, but with a certain limitations. So Krishna says, yes, I am the one who is empowering these devotees, uh, Devi Devatas to fulfill these desires. But ultimately then text 23, Krishna says, these benefits also which are given by the Devi Devatas, they are temporary. They are not permanent. And people who approach these Devi Devatas for these material benefit, they are less intelligent. Yes, they are not sinful. They are less intelligent, but really not sinful. At least they are not committing some sinful activities for their sense gratification. They are doing some pious activities only, right? Some dharmic activities only. So, but they are less intelligent. So Krishna says those with less intelligence, they go to Devi Devatas. And worshipper of Devi Devatas, they go to the abode of the Devi Devatas. And these abodes are temporary. The results offered by the Devatas are temporary in nature. Somebody may approach the Devi Devatas for gaining beauty or giving, gaining some health, little long age, some wealth or some other material benefit like that. But all these are temporary. Even though somebody may get wealth, that wealth may exhaust. Somebody can recover from a disease again, but this material body is temporary overall and ultimately one has to die. So one may get some health, health for some time or gain little longevity of life, but ultimately all these are temporary and it is like a business deal. Okay, somebody copy the homework, may get some quick result of getting a grade on the homework, but in the long run, he did not understand the concept and he may fail in the exam. So it is quick result, but temporary. So same way, somebody who approached the Devi Devatas, yes, they may get some desires fulfilled quickly, but they are temporary. So Krishna in text 23, he says, the results offered by the Devi Devatas, they are temporary. They exhaust very quickly. So results are temporary. Devi Devatas are also the post. First of all, they themselves are not permanent. Right? We know 
the devi devatas they also change indra chandra varuna they also change each manavantra the devi devatas change somebody else acquire that position so the duration of life of the devi devata so they also have the duration of their life and people keep going up and down based on their desires being fulfilled by the devi devata sometimes they can go up to the heavenly planet sometimes they can go to hellish planets also so people keep going up and down sometimes one can become devata also and sometimes they can become worshipper of devatas but krishna says somebody who worship me they will come live with me so worshipper of krishna they go to krishna loka and what is the difference in krishna loka and other planets even of the devi devatas all the other planets in this material world even the planets of the devi devatas they are also places of anxiety places of repeated birth and death but only the place of the supreme lord krishna loka vaikuntha that is free from any anxiety free from any disease free from any birth and death free from any problem of life so here krishna is telling the less intelligent people they approach to the devi devatas their desires get quickly fulfilled but those are temporary and one point to understand yes they are not sinful for sure but they are less intelligent their knowledge is stolen by the material desires but still at least they are taking shelter of some higher authority not taking shelter of sinful activities to fulfill their desires for example if a person got admission in iit now after getting admission in iit one should know what is my goal right i came here in iit to study to get that degree but if after getting admission in iit he is just spending all the time to find where is the best food and spending all the time to find the food only then what is the purpose of coming to iit the so same way we have got this human form of life the human purpose human form of life is to understand what is the real purpose of life not to just find the comfortable situations of life where is my food where is my place of sleep where is my uh, protection system and all so one should not just spending all the time in that and approaching the devi devatas also for that purpose so once one is starting the worship of devi devata somebody may be worshiping a particular devi devata but it doesn't mean that they have to stay at that level they need to ultimately go higher and find out who is the ultimate source of everything and coming to the level of vasudeva param gatim that vasudev is the ultimate source bahunam janmana mante gyanavan mam prapadyate vasudev sarvam iti sa mahatma sudurlava so in our previous lives we may have worshiped many different devi devatas taken shelter of particular deity but ultimately one should come to this level so all earlier whatever we may be doing is like the primary school right but one doesn't have to stay at the level of primary school one have to grow out of primary school students are expected to outgrow from their primary school or secondary school one day if a student desires to remain in the primary school for longer than necessary the teacher will discourage it right and coach the students to move forward in life similarly for somebody who has no understanding for them coming to the state of at least worshiping the devi devatas krishna recommends that so krishna says i make their path path steady but after that they need to progress further don't stay at that level only right so bhagavad gita is not for primary school students so here krishna further tells arjuna to understand higher spiritual principle and one can attain the object of one's worship and those who worship the devatas krishna says they go to the planets of the devatas but those who worship me they come to me so one should understand that the devatas are perishable the fruit of their worship are also perishable and 
earlier yes this concept of devi devata worship is made by krishna but that is as a concession so one should understand that this is a concept of concession krishna has given us the facility to worship the devi devatas just like as a primary school students but then one should not take it as the highest principle but try to move further up and krishna to understand krishna then one has to ultimately accept the shelter of a guru when many people say what is the need of guru right i can understand krishna by reading bhagavad gita by my own endeavor but why to take shelter of guru that is also the process which is made by krishna recommended by krishna why krishna says unless one come to the level of surrendering to somebody who is personally present there how can somebody surrender to me if somebody is not able to surrender to my representative who is there with them personally present there if they cannot surrender to that how what is the chance of them surrendering to me who is not personally they cannot perceive my presence so that's why krishna has made this system of approaching a bona fide spiritual master tad vidhi pranipatena pari prashnena sevaya right in text in chapter 4 text 34 krishna mentioned that one should approach a bona fide spiritual master to understand the supreme lord so up to text 23 we discussed the four type of people who start to approach krishna and out of those four the one who is in knowledge is best somebody who is in knowledge and engaged in devotional service that is considered as mahatma and then krishna talked about why people approach to different devi devatas because of their material desires to quickly fulfill those material desires but this concept of devi devatas is also made by krishna right for the gradual elevation of the living entity so this is a system of concession given to the living soul and krishna he is the one who makes their faith strong and krishna is the one who is supplying the result the benedictions through these devi devatas but one need to outgrow that system and elevate himself further to understand who is the ultimate source so we'll stop here and then continue from text 24 onwards in the next session shrimad bhagavad gita ki jai shil prabhupad ki jai ananta koti vaishna vrind ki jai thank you see if there is any questions or comments Yeah, Prabhuji, I have one question that we have the sloka kashad patitam toyam yatha gachati sagarata sarva deva namaskar keshavam prati gachati. Where does it come from? Is it in Puranas or is it in Gita? This is not in Bhagavad Gita. That sloka is not from Bhagavad Gita. This is definitely from. Uh, it, I'm not sure if it is some Prana or some Upanishada, but yes. And again, this. shloka is misquoted saying that as the water falling from the sky as rain gets into river and ultimately reaches ocean so same way no matter which devi devata you worship to ultimately it reaches to the supreme lord yes it may ultimately the result of our worship may reach to the supreme lord but the worshipper does not reach to the supreme lord okay understand that point because see if i throw a bucket of water in the river yes that water may flowing through the river ultimately end up in the ocean but it's not that i am reaching the ocean okay so that is the difference so worshipper is worshiping particular devi devatas ultimately they are also subordinate to the supreme lord so the result in some proportionate is reaching the supreme lord but that person need to come to the higher level that where is this result going to that ultimately i need to approach to that supreme lord okay hari krishna prabhu ji dandal pranam okay hari krishna
Okay, anything else? Okay, if not, then we will stop here. Hare Krishna, thank you everyone.